Ah, my god, why does Europe get all the fun? First, you get Quicksilver, then you get Midnight Cherry Red, then you get the free healthcare, and if that's not enough for you guys, well, guess what? Tesla's blessing a lot of the European and Middle East market with a new Model Y trim, the trim that I originally pre-ordered years and years ago that Tesla eventually reached out to the people who had these orders and said, sorry, you gotta switch to all-wheel drive, we're not gonna make this option. Elon teased it for a little while, and then it never happened until recently. I'm pretty sure these are being made at Giga Berlin, but yes, there is now a long range Model Y that's rear wheel drive, which means because there's less motor, a little bit less weight, but also a lot less power draw to the powertrain system, you get better range, you get much better efficiency, even though it's the exact same battery pack as the long range all wheel drive option. They're saying on the WLTP standard, this clocks at about 600 kilometers. So I'll translate that for our American counterparts. That's the equivalent of about 370 miles of range, but keep in mind, that's also on the WLTP standard, which is far more generous than the EPA. So, if we could take this hypothetical long-range rear-wheel drive Model Y and test it on the EPA cycle, it would probably be looking at 340, maybe 350 miles of range, which is the best we've ever seen in a Model Y, okay? Just as a reminder, the longest-range Model Y in America right now just clocks a little over 300 miles, so to get up to 340, 350 and still have access to the great 250 kilowatt charging speed, in my opinion, still plenty acceleration. You take a little bit of a hit, of course, with the 0 to 60 times, but who cares? This thing is cheaper than all-wheel drive. So you save money and get more range. I think that's why so many people opted for the long-range rear-wheel drive Model 3 back when Tesla offered that in 2018. And because the market is looking more and more tight for EVs globally, could be interest rates, could be a lot of brand loyalty, Loyalty in Europe to more German focused brands. Tesla having a hard time finding models that people are actually interested in buying, so they're diversifying the lineup a little bit, which I'm personally fine with. This is one of the reasons I still do not try to fight EV misinformation all that much because people are going to believe what they want to believe no matter how much you argue with them anyway. And also, it's kind of fun when companies have to try harder to sell people on the product. And you know, we've seen Tesla refresh the Model 3 and update the Model S with these new plans seats. We know there's the ludicrous Model 3 with the performance package around the corner and all that. So Tesla's doing what they can to improve the interior and the exterior styling and features with the ventilated seats and the ambient lighting and the rear mounted display. And of course with price cuts over the last couple of years, although in the US at least the Model Y prices are slowly creeping up. I think it'd be fun to see Tesla go in the more engineering direction and say, okay, maybe if we want to increase demand for our vehicles, let's double down on efficiency. Let's get our vehicles better range, maybe faster charging, and see if that helps move some inventory. I'm very curious to see how this option sells in Europe, but oh my god, I am so jealous for all the countries that have this trim available to you, because not only can you get the Quicksilver color, which in my opinion is the best color option Tesla offers, although I think there's a chance we may be getting that in America soon, because there's a lot of Quicksilver Model Ys showing up at Giga Texas. Fingers crossed that the US gets Quicksilver soon, but knowing that you can tether it with like a 350 mile range variant of the Model Y and that would be cheaper than the all-wheel drive Model Y. If it was in the US it would be the equivalent of about $48,000. Still factoring in with the federal tax credit and everything, we're talking about a low $40,000 EV that's a hatchback that has lots of storage space that already has an axe that can charge up to 250 kilowatts and is very efficient has incredible safety ratings a nice big frunk, a smooth suspension and that high range of close to 340, 350 miles. Oh man, that's just gonna be a bargain. No wonder it's the best-selling vehicle in the world. And maybe that range boost is exactly the kind of distraction Tesla needs to get people to stop thinking about the Juniper refresh, which is happening next year, most likely. Because yeah, a lot of people are probably holding off on buying because they're like, nope, nope, I'm waiting until all of those cool refresh Model 3 features make their way to the Model Y. People want the new headlights, the new taillights. They want the rear-mounted display. The biggest feature, in my opinion, is not the ambient lighting or the removal of gear stocks, but the ventilated seats. Oh my gosh, especially when you live in a super warm climate like I do, where it regularly gets over 100 degrees outside in summer. Oh man, those ventilated seats are a godsend. So I don't blame you if you're waiting for next year's Model Y too, but if Tesla comes up with some really competitive perks with the free FSD included for a month, and of course the gear stocks are still available on the Model Y, so if you really care about that, you can hold on to it. Maybe they 
could do what they did in China and just add a little bit of ambient lighting to the front. It's not quite the huge dashboard refresh that the Model 3 got, but it is a little bit of a touch up, I guess, to increase demand. Coupled with some free supercharging, I could see Tesla really moving some inventory if they bring this option to the US, which in my opinion should be very, very simple. You know, Giga Berlin was able to do it. It's like, just take out, you know, the front motor and call it a day. In my opinion, it doesn't even have to be cheaper than the all wheel drive, even if it was the same price and they just let you decide, okay, it's gonna be 50 grand either way, but you can choose to have more range or you can have better acceleration and all wheel drive if you live in a winter climate and you care about more traction control. Just let the consumer decide. And I think that the demand would be much higher than what it is today. And of course, Tesla, please, for the love of God, bring this long range rear wheel drive option back to the Model 3, especially now that we've got some nice big juicy battery packs in this thing. It's more aerodynamic than it was before with this updated refresh look. And already with the all wheel drive long range Model 3, Tesla is able to clock about 340 miles on the EPA test cycle. If they made that option rear wheel drive, I think we're easily looking at like a 370 mile range for a vehicle that's, you know, less than $50,000, which those kinds of range numbers for the price are kind of unheard of. And you might want to beat those range numbers before Aptera reaches the market because that's going to be a sub $40,000 vehicle with an over 400 mile range. So they're going to have you smoke there. I know at the end of the day, range is not everything. I've talked about that on this channel before. It's more about your charging curve, but I do think that your estimated range actually works as a great advertising technique because whenever I talk to people that are curious about EVs, those are almost always the top two most common questions. How long does it take to charge and how far can it go on a single charge? So the higher that number, the better impression I think someone will have on the brand. And then as they get more into it, they'll probably figure out that range isn't all that much. But if you tell people that the range numbers are pretty high, I think they'll be more open to it. Because if I tell people that my Model 3 gets, you know, 250 miles of range on a charge, they almost write it off instantly. They're like, well, that's not enough. I need a gas car, I guess. But if you tell them, ah, 370, 350, they might be more likely to go, okay, that's, that's pretty good. That's pretty much what I get in my gas car. What do you guys think? Is Tesla wrong to be offering more efficient options? What other demand levers do you think Tesla could pull to move more inventory? Feel free to let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly. Seriously, helps us out a ton, as does just watching these videos. So thanks again. Have an excellent rest of your day.